Hello, crab. Hope everybody's having a good day so, uh, today. I am full of delicious grilled food, so I'm feeling uh, actually quite good. A little bit parched, but good. Hello, T Money. How's it going? Oh, thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> Give me a second. Don't know if it's a Rona or a cold yet, but I'm alive. Well, let's hope it's not Rona. Prayers to you, definitely. Uh, but how is everyone doing today? Delicious agua. Sorry, I forgot to turn the game volume on. I'm excited for this. Although I do got to pull up uh, a help for this. <laughs> Me when your mom. Oh, okay. That was a nice sip, thanks. Uh... Still trying to get things ready. Alright. Trying to figure out how to do the necromancer quest here. Fuck, I need to work on the bony mode I keep forgetting. No worries, no worries. Alright, so I, I apologize ahead of time that the audio keeps going to keep going out. I can help with the necromancer quest. I appreciate that. I'm just trying to figure out like where the thing is. So lumber permit, ghost wood. Couldn't taste shit and only felt pain. Ugh. Drink whiskey, the whole damn bottle, buy it. Maybe I need to go to Breadwood? Spot a horse skeleton flying a few yards off the side of the trail. You tie a fixed to a tree just out of sight of it. No sense in scaring him, and investigate. Somehow its saddlebags are still intact. Maybe the big red plus signs embroidered on the sides of them add to their durability. Pills, laudanum tonic, medical gun. If you don't think about it too much, a pistol with more effective syringe. What are you looking for? I'm looking for all the locations that I need for the... To, to, to find the tower. I know there's six. Uh, missing mail, missing soup. 
Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh... Oh, the locations will be random. Oh, fuck. When is it about the military cemetery? Plot 043 or 1013. Okay. Pass by two skeletons who are facing each other with their arms akimbo in the traditional shootout, shootout stare-down pose. When you stop to watch what happens, they both turn and look at you. Whoops. Another is the very last part of Reboot Hill for our left side. Okay. Thank you. Use magic that time. All right, let's see. Visit a plot this is zero four three. Let's dig it up. So, how is everybody's day today? If I've already, if I've already asked that. It's not zero four three, so next up, Tombstone, you find a pile of refuse, uh, obviously left behind by one of the necromancer's cultists. In addition to being evil meddlers and dark forces, best left on Metalden, those jerks are real litter bugs. You find nothing of interest. Where the hell is my book? Hey, where the hell's my book? Oh, Necromancer Journal. Cryptic note you found about health count energy. Uh, I didn't have it. Good deal, yours? I'm, it, I'm doing decently today. I actually had the first grill of the year, so I'm full of uh, smokey's goodness. Exhaust, but that's all? Well, it's, that's at least better than, like being in turmoil. Alright, so that's not the right one. Old coins. Nice. So you need to actually use the items as well. So just don't be a dumbass like me looking for the last one while it's just in your inventory. How would I know which to use? Charred locket? Oh, there's a locket locket. Picture of Mary Stearns. Faded uh, to girl type of a little girl. Name Mary's written on the back. One of the things you need are rope receipt, cryptic note about ley lines, burnt scroll. I got the cryptic note. You examine the weird note, but you can't make heads or tails of it. You stick it to your necromancer journal for now. Okay, so that's that. And I have the rope receipts. You read over the receipt again. Who'd need that many robes? You stick the receipt what, into your necromancer journal. It had to be related. Uh, burnt scroll. Found a receipt for the delivery of robes. Looking at closely, see that it's a surcharge for delivery past Boulder Pass. His necromancer's lair is definitely uh, west of the mountains. Good to know. I don't know about ley lines, but you don't really know, know what they are. You need to find somebody to help you, somebody smart, and somebody who, who knows a lot about magic. 
Professor Okidok. Griffin note about Helco Elstrom Ranch. Your knowledge of mushroom combined with the carelessness of the necromancer's mushroom gathering calls this to allow you allowed you to narrow down the location to a strip of land between the big canyon and the mountains between there and Dirtwater. Alright. To the professor. Before you can react to, a, uh, to the sudden howling, a ghost train surges over a hill and roars past, just missing you. Three skeleton train robbers arrive just behind it, and barely avoid colliding with you by pulling back hard on their reins. The train vanishes in the distance, and the robbers seem really annoyed by your interference. I'm too strong! Uh, do you know anything about ley lines? I don't hold much with that mysti mystical mumbo jumbo. It's very unscientific. But it does come up in my research from time to time, so I can give you a basic overview. He draws some curved, intersecting lines on a piece of paper and explains how they relate to local geography and so called mystical forces. It's pretty interesting stuff, and that makes sense considering what you already know about magic. How did you pick the name Final Fire 64? I have I have talked about this before, um, but I'm always willing to talk about it. So, way back about late late high school, early college, I was very depressed, um, and I decided, you know what, I'll. And this is gonna get dark real quickly. I will figure out. Uh, how to uh, basically off myself by some sort of form. I don't remember what the form was called, and I don't. I don't intend to look it back up. But basically, I had used the alias Final Fire initially to uh, as as like a representation of like the last fire burning, basically. And and t I I've. I've, I've mostly long since, I guess, abandoned those thoughts for 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 my own for my own health. Um, and I, I've kept the name because I want it as a reminder to both myself and to other people that no matter what, like you, you like it might just be like the last fire burning initially, but now it's. It's, it's something that you can still use to keep yourself going, if that makes sense. You use it as a reminder to myself and to other people that there is a, a, a still a light. But yeah, that's... That's, that's the simple version. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. This is an illustration of the basic principles of lay geography. It's simple enough to be understood by a layman. This diagram is surprisingly comprehensible. You stick it in your necromancer journal. Sometimes when you hit rock bottom, I'm reminded that there's still shit worth fighting for helps a lot. Exactly, and that's one of the reasons why I've, uh, I've one of my one of the things I keep telling you guys is uh, one of one of my one of my. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the correct word for it, but basically, uh, heroism is hanging on one minute longer. We're holding on one minute longer because no matter what, your your fight's still worth something to somebody, be it to yourself or to other people, and you're still a hero for doing so. There's still shit worth fighting for. Thank you for that, Jade. I don't know why it stuck to my lip. As for the 64 part, it was just because I, my first console was the Nintendo 64. Using a ley line diagram, you narrow the location 
the necromancer is layered down to a handful of possible locations based on the unseen currents of energy that riddle the land. Grippin' note you found about Hellcow energy indicates that the necromancer's lair is somewhere fairly close to Hellstrom Ranch. Your knowledge of mushrooms combined with the carelessness of the, of the necromancer's mushroom gathering cultists allowed you to narrow the location down to a strip of land between uh, the big canyon and the mountains between there and Dirtwater. You've got it. You finally uh, got enough information to pinpoint the precise location of the necromancer's lair. Hell yeah. Let's go kick some necromancer ass! Where my chips were rubbed last night, I woke up and I was immediately disappointed. Oh no, what kind of chips were they? Let's fight a nerd as soon as you as soon as you say that as soon as a nerd skeleton pops up. Up to one side of the desert trail, a skeleton is sitting on the shade of a rocky ridge. Looks like some poor traveler must have succumbed to the heat. As you move closer to investigate, it appears that the skeleton is holding a book. And as you get close enough to see with the copy of the Longfellow trans or as you get close enough to see that it's a copy of the Longfellow translation of Dante's Divine Comedy. You notice that the skeleton is in fact reading it, turning the pages and making little notes on the margins of the pencil. Excuse me, you're in my light. Regular curly potato chips? Oh, I love rich, rich chips. <sighs> Sorry, it took me by surprise. Ask about his book. The Divine Comedy? That's about heaven and hell and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Is it accurate? I'm making corrections. You know, most skeletons like me just sort of hiss and attack me. Because you won't leave them alone while they're reading? I assume more because of them being rabid, mindless automatons. You might not find out how rabid, if, rabid I can be if you don't stop bugging me. You get on your horse and leave the skeleton to his reading. He seems grateful. Hell yeah, nice people stuff. I like the big one rather than the canned ones, probably because they're oilier. Uh, that and the canned ones are... Uh, often, um, more like, uh, it's, it's like, it's like compressed mashed potato, basically. All blackened and withered. Has Elohim recalibrated recently? No. Uh, I need to finish my, watch, finish my cow puncher. I think it'd be fun. Skull above the door screams PASSWORD! Abracadaver. There's a click inside the door as it unlocks. Some necromantic runes. They desire to be read. Sure. You read the runes closely, tracing them with one finger. They glow they they glow darkly at your touch. You learn the the three ancient names. A, name of Bone Hatred, a name of Bone Void, and a name of Bone Never Was. <laughs> Is it like the canned ones better? Yeah. Drink the blood? Okay. It's found of blood. Uh, nothing weird about that. Okay, drink it. The blood is delicious. It's like a meaty Kool-Aid. Ugh. Vitality has been boosted by some blood of you drank from a fountain of blood. This is probably totally safe and good. Nice. You approach the army of skeletons without fear. Something in your eyes causes them to shrink back slightly. Banish them. Your eyes turn black as you howl three names. The skeletons screech and explode out of existence. Heh. <laughs> Some necromantic runes. They demand to be read. Uh, they glow, they glow darkly at your touch. A name that banishes mind. A name that hatches void from a toothed egg. All right. Oh, there's a big old pillar of skulls blocking your path. There is bound to be one of these in here somewhere, right? Excuse me, fellas. I need to get past here. The skulls hiss and chitter and giggle at you. So that's no then. It was nine actually different skeletons. Oh. I 
Hey, Terra, how's it going? How's your day? I did some grilling today, and so I'm full of good food. And I, I don't know if you guys, you probably guys already know, but I'm, 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 I'm a huge foodie. Alright, so should I annihilate the skulls or unfox the skulls? Grilling is fun. I, I heavily enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I want to do this year, this year, this uh, summer is uh, grilled peaches, maybe some grilled corn. The good shit, you know? Annihilate. Kill, murder. General, are you okay? It, when, if you get the DLC for this game, do you know that it's much smaller than the base game? I kind of figured, as DLC should be. Unless it's like a collaboration between two different like game developers. You have all the names. Skulls screech and hiss and crack and chatter and are swallowed by nothing. I am Darkness Incarnate. <laughs> thump and smash. You read the runes closely, tracing them with one finger. They glow darkly at your touch. You learn a name that dissolves bonds. You learn a name that withers love, corrupts love, twists and blackens it, turns it into hate. Two skeletons have their names written on their foreheads that they won't forget them. Actually, wait. Maybe they have the other one's name. Banish them. You hiss the names, and the names slither onto onto your foes. The giant skeletons turn and smash each other until only splinters remain. I am now evil. You approach the throne and the withered husk sitting on it. Unbelievable. All that killing, all that horror, and this is what's behind it. He tries to speak to you, but all that comes out is dust. Ooh. Now do we destroy him or consume him? Consume worse is the ending. I kind of don't want to do that now. Thank you for the hydrate. Ah, delicious agua. I don't know why I have to say that every time. Um. Actually, no, let's pull this. Uh. Sphix, can you do a pull? Destroy or consume. Actually, no, 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 no. You know what? No, no. I, I'll. I'm just gonna destroy it. I don't want. I don't want a bad ending. I want. A, I want a good ending. I hate being a bad person. Puff a breath at the necromancer and he crumbles to powder. His crown hits the ground and shatters into a thousand pieces. Well, so much for that, getting good riddance. I apologize, guys. I, I just don't want to have, like, a bad ending. Also, it said there was a throne. Or a crown. Let's see one. Is 
not much left to do with this journal now. You consider throwing it away, but I guess it's a pretty good, good souvenir. Don't look at the West of Loathing achievement I got. something weird, I think, like your dog or something like that. I'm so reading the lore of this shit later. Spix the lore master. I get, oh, I'm not friends with you on Steam. Oh, oh. sorry about that. I guess we just killed it. We did it. Uh, yep, that's one necromancer that's romanced his last neck. High five. Boom. Heck yeah. Time to go to the circus. For me, it says we are. I guess. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, there you are. Yeah, he did. Looks like you found the circus whose clown those clowns were talking about. Ugh, a circus. That's like a clown hive. Fortunately, it's not a very big circus. There probably aren't very many clowns. Certainly not enough for an army or an invasion force or anything. But still, it turns out to be it turns out demonic clowns are a real thing. Any number of them could be real trouble. Walk up as nonchalantly as possible so the clown manning clowning so the clown manning clowning the tick and booth won't suspect you know his horrible secret. Slaughter the clowns? That's fine. Whistle innocently. Well now this whole clown situation may be a speck bigger than we thought. Kind of a lot of them, yeah. I ain't real enthused about going in there, but but we probably better see what they're up to, yeah. As you approach, the clown puts on that basic, basically cheerful facial expression that retail employees use on the last thing they want to deal with as a customer, but they're not allowed to say so. <laughs> You're green again, looking great. Thanks, Seawolf. When you get up close, the clown blinks, narrows his eyes, and looks something looks at something under his counter. When he looks back at you, expression has more than a little glare in it. Welcome to Barney B. Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus side zone, sir. How can I help you? Uh, I'd like to see the circus, please. Well, you came to the right place then. <laughs> but if you want to get inside, you'll need a ticket. And presumably you can sell me one? Why, certainly I can. Uh, but that's, that's my job after all. For you, sir, a ticket will cost 10,000 meat. Say what? Does it seem a bit high? I promise you, sir, at this price, it's a real steal. Well, you've got that right. This game is West of Loathing. It is a very, very comedic, uh, very simplistic art style. Uh, but it's a fantastic game. I've, I've loved it through and through. Even the grindy parts don't make it seem as grindy. Sorry, I'm just trying to deal with something here. Fuck's sake. It doesn't beat Minecraft though? Ah, uh, it might. Why 
Why is it so, so expensive? Well, now this is no podunk little traveling circus. We've got rides, games, food, and an amazing demonstration of knife throwing skill by none other than Barnaby Bob himself. Tell me about the rides. Nothing can beat Minecraft? I know a lot of games that can beat Minecraft. Homeworld? Xenoblade? Uh, Tetris? Mario 64? Wind Waker? Tell me more about the rides. Well, I suppose I, sh I suppose it's just to say ride. But we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident since, uh, well, we, since we stopped turning it on. Tell me more about the games. Oh, we got tons of them. Does three count as tons? Three is more like some. <laughs> We've got some of them. Yep. They have frog lights. <laughs> Tell me more about the food. We've got your favorites. Popped corn, sarsaparilla with the fancy new bottle caps. And get this. Did you hear about a new thing that, uh, that a, a fella invented? Cotton candy? Yeah, I think it might have. Well, it's still patented, but we're, we're pretty sure we figured out how it works. Mostly. More or less. <laughs> tell me more about Barnaby Bob. Oh, the boss is a real master of knives, let me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on a stage and throws knives at him. He never misses their tar his target. Did you leave the part out where he puts on an apple on his head or something? Oh, what? Oh, right, sure. Report that to the fellow who invented Cotton Candy. I'm gonna fucking sue you. Beat the clouds with suing. You're doing a very good job of selling me on this. Why? Whatever do you mean? Attempt to off Alex the clan. First you ask for an outrageous sum of meat. Then you describe your circus in terms that make it sound distinctly cut rate. Well, now, if you expected me to pay that much, you'd be doing you'd be doing your ha uh, your best to make it sound like a magical paradise. On the other hand, if it really is a chintzy as you describe it, you'd be asking a price cheap enough to overcome poor word of mouth. Talking, uh. Unfortunately, I can't actually do that. Uh, that he commits murder on stage. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do that one because it's it's gonna it's basically stopping me from playing like going any further than this for five minutes. Unless chat wants me to wait here for five minutes. Listening to oddly creepy uh, circus music. Refund it? Okay, thank you. I I I don't want I don't wanna just uh, don't wanna like chins out chat, you know? Especially if it's gonna halt the stream for it. Like if if you wanna ban an action, ban ban something that's not gonna like uh, something like a like, creative like uh, I can't walk horizontal or something like that. Well, I guess in this game it's, you know, you, you know, you know what I mean. Like, be a little, be a little bit creative with it. Make it so that I can actually progress, but it makes it like ten times more difficult to do so. Which leads me to the conclusion that for some reason you don't actually want to sell me a ticket. The clown starts to look nervous. Now, now, let's not jump to conclusions, friend. I'm just pulling your leg up. It's clowning around like we do. It's all in good fun. So the actual price is 500 meat. I could buy half a horse for that. Sure, what are you gonna do with half a horse? The circus is much more entertaining. Ban magic, oh fuck. I don't know, still seems shady to me. I'm pretty sure you're hiding something. Maybe something you wouldn't want the marshals to find out about. Hey wow, geez mister, fine you win. Look, it's on the house, okay? Just give me a hand so I can stamp you for re-entry. There, good grief. Thanks. Yeah, don't mention it. Literally, do not mention it. I just... I just fucked up a clown's day. Woo! As you enter the circuit the ticket booth, clown shouts, Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, sir. In a, in a loud and enthusiastic <laughs> voice. 
yay. You walk into the circus. Actually, I guess it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. As nonchalantly as possible. There are a bunch of clowns around, working at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers, of which there doesn't seem to be more than a dozen or so. Which is good in that it means the clowns can't disappear, uh, disappear you as easily if they figure out what you know. But on the other hand, if things go wrong here, innocent bystanders might get caught in the crossfire. I would hold down the fort while you go scout around. Yeah, all right. Be careful now. I ain't like I ain't like the prospect of them uh, figuring out they uh, that we know what they are. Oh, that is an understatement. There's a kid here searching around with a sad look on his face. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? Wait a moment, we'll wait to kill the clown now. <laughs> I lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What does it look like? It's shiny steel and it's on a little chain. Alright, I'll let you know if I find it. There's a clown here selling rubber toy balloons. You notice that he's watching you and then he notices that you notice. And he smiles and waggles the balloon at you enticingly. How are you there, fella? Can I interest you in a toy balloon? How much are they? For you, just 30 meat. What colors do you have? Oh, well, just take a look. Um, red. They're all red. How do you make them float like that? Well, there's nothing to it. Heck, they all float around here. Ho oh, ho! Of course. Sure, I'll take one. Alrighty, then here you go. Anything else I can do for you? I got a balloon! Okay, tell me more about your circus. Really, it's more of a carnival, but not, let's not split hairs. Ho oh, ho, what would you like to do now? What are your travel plans? This place you set up is kind of out of the way. What are your plans? I haven't decided yet. That's why we set up, that's why we set down somewhere a bit more rural. Keep things relatively quiet while we scout around and get the lay of the land and all. Ho oh, ho. Where did you travel from? What was your previous stop? Was your previous stop interesting? Oh, northwestish. It was a little hole in the ground kind of place. You wouldn't have heard of it. Ho ho. The clown stinks. He parted into the balloon. <laughs> clown. Why is everyone working here? Or why is everyone working here a clown? Oh, traditional. When the what do you call it? Rodeo stopped being put on. The rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it just became a normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. Ho oh, ho! This is Barnaby Gob Bob guy. Oh, the boss is a real famous showman. Though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. Ho oh, ho! He gotta like a hawk, and he's a real whiz with those knives of his. Don't miss it. Don't miss the show. It's a real highlight of the carnival. All right. See you around, clown. Catch you later, like an alligator. So the, wait, the clown isn't gonna stab you or kill you? I don't think yet. I feel like there's something a little bit more dastardly. Hi there, fella. This is your game to challenge the strength, and I hope you don't mind me saying so. But if you might prefer one of the other games, if you try your luck, though, I certainly won't stop you. What's the game? Simple as can be. Just take this big mallet here and hit the lever under the bell. Ring the bell, and you win. No surprise. Excuse me. A ticket to Barnaby Bob's stage show. Which is otherwise sold out, so it's a rare catch, my friend. Okay, I'll give it a shot. It's rigged, isn't it? Probably. Let me see. Hit it. Hit it extremely hard. Oh, I guess not. You pick up the mallet, toss it end over end, and catch a couple of times to test its weight. Casually slam it into the lever. Well, I'll be. That's some genuine muscle you got on you, fella. Looks like you're a winner. The show will be starting soon, so don't miss it. That was too, too easy. This game appear this appears to be some kind of card-based carnival game, though it's not clear how it works from here. Step right up, fella, step right up. If I may say so, you got the look of an intelligent and learned individual about you. And I happen to have a game here about those to put those faculties to the test. 
What's the game? The simplest guesting game imaginable. I've got a standard deck of playing cards here. I'll show you all the faces, and I turn them and turn them and back over and start picking cards. You guess what cards I pick, and you win. You don't shuffle them. No, sir. If you can memorize a deck of cards that fast, more power to you. Or if you got a touch of magic in you and want to try reading my mind, that's fine too. Just don't dig too deep, heh? For sure. Careful this kind of deck of cards as the clown spreads it out in front of you and then turns them over turns them over with a sweeping flourish. Ready? Give it your all. Clown starts picking cards out of the deck and holding them up with the backs to you. You rattle off their names as fast as he can pick them up. He seems genuinely impressed. That sir is so remarkable as to practical as to be practical frightening. Looks like we have a winner. Thanks! I see you've already got a ticket to Barnaby Bob's show though, and those are limited one to a patron. Let me give you our other grand prize. He hands you a large and reasonably well made plush owl. I love owls. This big plush owl is actually pretty impressive for carnival game loot. The eyes might even be real glass. Owls are my favorite animal. This appears to be a shooting gallery type carnival game. Howdy there, fella. What we have here is a game for sharp eyes and quick reflexes. Hope you, don't, hope you won't take this as an insult if I suggest one of the other games might be more at your speed, but you're welcome to try luck all the same. Sure. Well, on the wall behind me, I've got a bunch of thick-skinned, under-inflated balloons. For for 10 meat, I'll loan you a cheap, inaccurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition. And your goal is to pop as many of those balloons as before your pistol stops working. That's an unusually honest sounding description. I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is only makes people more determined uh, to be the one who beats it. Okay. Why is everyone a VTuber? Because it's a lot nicer to you guys than showing my fucking ugly ass face. Shoot like a jaguar. I'm not sure how a jaguar shoots, but presumably it's pretty good. Uh, you clear nearly the entire wall of balloons, and the clown looks genuinely impressed. Well, beat. Looks like you win. Congratulations on the finest shoot I've seen in quite a time. Thanks. I've seen we got a ticket to Barnaby Shop, Barnaby Bob's show, though, and those are limited to one a patron. Uh, let me give you our other grand prize. Stuff cat. It's Elohim. I got a stuffed Elohim. All oh, four people I follow that are live are VTubers. Nice. Basically, I became a VTuber because I didn't want to. Uh, I don't. I don't have the highest self-esteem. Mary go around has a dirty canvas tarp over it. Read the sign. The sign says "condemned" until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. Fuck. <laughs> Food, cold drinks, tepid candy. <laughs> Red Hots calls the clown behind this food stand. Red Hots put lungs and two kinds of mustard. There's also a small sign that says lost and found. If I was to do that sort of thing, I'd probably get something like my avatar emotes. I could see that. You can actually get an achievement from the tepid candy. You just put the slide whistle in the laws and found. Okay. Howdy, sir. Interested in your foot long, hot foot long sausage. How much are they? 250 with your choice of condiments, okay? I got an item clown sausage. I. I feel wronged. I feel very, very wronged. Cold drinks calls the clown behind this food stand. Ice cold sarsaparilla in bottles. Ha! 
Howdy, sir. Care to treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said you're selling them in bottles? That's right. Got the new fangled crown cork bottle caps and all. What kinds do you have? Root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. Ooh. How about cream soda? How about rhubarb? How about rhubarb? How about orange? How about key lime? How about cola? How about iced tea? How about diet or energy drinks? How about cherry? Snuzzleberry? Celery? Blue raspberry? Grapefruit? Black cherry? Pomegranate? Energy drinks? Iced tea? Grapefruit? Grapefruit? Or blue raspberry? Rhubarb? Okay, I'm going. <laughs> Body, I get. <laughs> Clown cocker. I was gonna draw a, a sphinx, but then my brain melted. I realized I have no idea what sphinx's character looks like. I may, I, I have made sketch. Oh no. Oh, uh, I feel like one's gonna be cursed. What kinds do you have again? Make the drinks yourself. If you're asking if we have a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of sodas in our traveling carnival, no, we stock up as we pass through large towns. How much are they? 205 meats. Oh, it's for the deposit of the bottle. <laughs> That's okay. I'll take one. Root beer, ginger beer, or sarsaparilla? I fucking love root beer. It's a bottle of root beer. The least disappointing thing out of the set of things that, that have the word beer in them but aren't beer. Cotton candy calls the clown behind this food stand and then makes a fweeoot sound with the noise of the slide whistle. Come try this just invented confectionery delight. Fweet! Step right up, fellas. Step up and try one of the new world's newest candy sensation. What is it again? Cotton candy, the finest in several senses of the word. Spun sugar created with a revolutionary new process. It's so light and sweet and fluffy, it's like eating butterfly dreams and kitten wishes. Fweet! So it's an actually made of cotton. What? No, cotton is indigestible no matter how much chocolate you cover with it. Uh, <laughs> found out the hard way, did you? <laughs> how much does it cost? 300 million, sure. Okay. The clown puts the slide whistle down on the counter, ducks underneath, and comes back up with a paper cone which he holds in the mouth of the metal box. He pulls down a lever and the machine makes a thin squealing sound as gl uh, glittering white sponge sugar collects in around the paper cone in a fluffy cloud. Here you go, enjoy. Fweet. How do you make it? He pats the middle box with a white funnel coming out the top. This machine right here, can't tell you how it works as much as I like to brag, it's a trade secret. You invented it? Not as much such. A couple dentists down south are the first ones. Dentists, go figure. For you. But after hearing about it, I managed to figure out how it works, made a few improvements with my design too. I'm really curious. Sorry fella, uh, the secrets in this box are for nobody's eyes but mine own. I, I'll be happy to sell you some can cotton candy, though. How much does it cost? How do I get the, the slide whistle? Buy cotton candy twice. Okay. How much does it cost? I'll take one. Oh, 300 meat steel is whistle, okay, I see. Okay. The clown puts puts the slide whistle down on the counter and ducks underneath. You quickly snatch the, uh, the whistle and slip it into your pocket. Slide whistle, you've probably st you've stolen what is probably the only source of real joy in that clown's life. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like cotton candy. I like cotton candy, but it's actually like the real stuff. Uh, 
I was like that video of the raccoon watching Cotton Candy. I feel so bad for the raccoon watching that. He comes back up with the paper cone which he holds in the mouth. Okay, I've already seen that. Uh, hey, where's my slide whistle? Oh man, I could have sworn I just put it down right here. I haven't seen it, bye. The Irish called Cotton Candy Daddy's Beard. Okay. Texture's like the whole thing. Oh. Uh, welcome to the bonfire, Lauren. I haven't seen you around before. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'd like to see the lost and found. Oh, sure thing, what'd you lose? A lucky ball cap. The clown pulls a, wooden, pulls a wooden box from out of the counter and looks inside. Here's your luck, this one yours. He puts the box on the counter for you to see and turns turns his back to his to his grill for a moment. Look inside. Yep, yeah, that's one, thanks. No problem, sir. I'd like to see the lost and found. My bottle of smelling salts. Also, have you seen the cotton candy ice cream burrito? Ew. What? Look inside. Put the side whistle in the box. Slip the side whistle into the box of the clown notice. Like, nope, it's a different one. Thanks. I wish. Sure, thanks. I'm just going to quickly grab a uh, bottle of smelling salts. I didn't get an achievement for that. My pocket knife. A folding pocket knife like this one was going to be useful as a weapon, but you never know what might come in handy with something else. Plus, it was free. Uh, I like to see lost and found. Oh. What do you say? Well, you just figured that you'd see if I had anything you liked? Look, there's no such thing as an honest thief. You pick one or the other, sorry. I can see the boss found my handkerchief. Take that handkerchief. Thankfully, the previous owner does not appear to have gotten any use out of it. Okay, cool. Need to visit the clown after? Okay. Aren't you on the other side of the midway just now? Oh, nope, that's the other balloon guy. We just dress alike and use the same face paint, did we fool ya? He grins and he gives you an exaggerated wink. Uh... Sideshow? Okay. This clown is presumably saying to take us to the sideshow. Howdy, fella, can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the sideshow? What else do you have in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh. I think Fino's just rubbing everyone and honestly I'm okay with it. I, I try not to be a bad person, but like, these are clowns. Clowns. How much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. And for everyone else, 300 meat. Okay, man. You won't be disappointed, and the event that you are disappointed, no refunds. Takes your meat, stamps your hand. There you go, enjoy. Sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all these like, good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everything look even more eerie. The clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in, take your time, have a look around. Just remember, no touching. Now, Sphix, uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is that, uh, uh, like, the, these clowns are demon clowns, so. There's a lady who, with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box, and she nods politely at you. Uh, hello. Hello there, enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yes, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. What's your name? I'm Janet, and you? I'm Final. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Final. Why are you in a box? That's a real personal question, isn't it? 
Oh, sorry. I'm only teasing to you. Would you like to see uh, inside? Sure. That did not read head. <laughs> Janet whistles to signal the clown and he moseys over. He unlocks the door to the front of the box and throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, compl complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes. Ticking clockwork gears and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slush to the tubes. A large bellows near the top inflates and uh, then begins to slow deflate. What do you think? It's some kind of trick, right? You're folded up in a mirror by uh, and there is something? No trick. The clown chuckles and walks around the back of the box. He opens a hatch and waves at you through it, then saunters back to his place by the shelves. Like, I don't want to be rude, but that's... So you have fun. Okie doke, General. Thank you. What do I? What do I say? I don't want to be rude. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. It's certainly educational, I imagine. The larger tank to on the left is my stomach if you'd like to see what I had for lunch today. Being rude to the clowns includes gumbo. <laughs> Alright. Well, to keep in mind, I'm trying my best not to be rude. At least to some of these people. Examiner workings. You watch the various liquids slosh around in their tanks for pipes for minutes. Weird, gross, but it's indeed educational. What, you know what makes a human uh, being tick? And now to stop that one from ticking, come to that. How'd this happen? Were you some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Of course, sorry it must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases it into a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Oh, fuck. Well, it was nice to meet you. Good luck, final. I feel bad for her. It's an in-game action, though? Yep. Any few people from being mean to me, how did I not think of that? Yeah, it's only in-game. There's um, If there's a character named Gumbo, I can't be mean to him. <laughs> but he's not new. <laughs> hey, KTKJ, how's it going? Gotta take a quick drink here. It's going good? Nice. This man is neatly dressed, though his suit is a bit threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Hello there, welcome to the Sideshow. My name's Douglas. I'm Final. Delighted to meet you. So, uh, well... Are you perhaps trying to think of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Final. I am in a Sideshow, after all. It's an obvious and natural question. Wait a minute. You said the last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. Thank you for the buzz check. Oh. I gotta pop my chest. for a while, Sphinx. I just found out a way to kill both clowns and cows in one foul swoop. Nice. 
He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides, and he has another face on the back of his head, with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slowly, though certainly not as much as you would expect. Oh! Chicken? The front place has good chicken? Nice! I never said a while, I said it's been a bit. I say I can eat a whole dinner in a few to eight minutes, depending on how hungry and how fast I want to finish. Yeah. Oh, that's... Oh, fucking visceral. What the... Surprising, yes? A bit, yeah? How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds up the pipe to, to his now back of his head, so the other face can take a puff. Are you... What's the phrase? Siamese twins. Not exactly, it's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body with two faces? It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind. With, as you say, two faces. You're right. You're right, that doesn't make any sense at all. The other face chuckles and Douglas holds his magazine behind, uh, behind his back. Took some getting used to, that much is quite certain. Reborn like this. So when to kill cows and clowns, go to the destroyed campsite and follow the tracks backwards. Okay. I think I did that one already. I gotta, I gotta see. I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. No apology necessary. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I, I assure you. Why are you in a sideshow? With a regular suit and haircut, you could easily pass as normal. I have a con... I have a contract, okay. In the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. Talk to you later, Douglas. Gumbo is free me now. Gumbo! Fuck. This guy is a uh, startling sight, even for a circus freak show. His entire head is one enormous eyeball. As you look over him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much choice. Uh, hello there, I'm final. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance, a guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the, well, what you would call the base of his skull, if he had one. Sort of crumpled, fleshy mass with the size of a fist. The squint in some uh, imagination almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestig vestigial remains of a human head. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool. And the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. So, uh, the circus gig. How do you like it? His, his hands slowly curl into fists and the knuckles turn white with tension. I see, uh, I understand. Oh, fuck. Do you blink? Or wink, I guess? I guess not. So basically, the clowns fucked these poor people up. Shelves are filled with jars and the jars are filled with things. Real weird looking things. You lean and look a little closer to expected jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutated animals pickled in, in formaldehyde. A three-headed kitten, some kind of uh, feral weasel with eight legs, a twisted Mobius uh, loop of a snake and without a head or a tail, weird crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge gross pale grubs like fat featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has a shiny black and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted his face in an apparent, apparent parody of a clown makeup. Yuck. Ugh. Does the fucking list of students on Wikipedia? I would assume so. Alligator Gumbo would be interesting, albeit a slightly tough. A <laughs> list of people who did your mom. I dare someone to make a Wikipedia article that says that. 
<laughs> the, only, the only thing it says is your dad and me. <laughs> Pasty white face has been painted with uh, little blue triangles over and over, over and under the eyes. The creature has a long, thin slash of a mouth as well, and the area around it has been painted with a bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to fa uh, face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Ha 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 ha, I got you pretty good there, buddy. for the other is a dog. <laughs> what? What in the... What is that? Ha. Huh. It ain't a real critter. It's, it's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. It's got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with. He takes a little push button gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Should've seen your face. You both jumped right out of your boots. Oh. That's not what it is. This music is gonna fucking drive me nuts. These shelves are displaying a large collection of strangely painted eggs. Up closer look. You see several shelves full of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A small placard pinned to one of the shelves says clown eggs. In the circus community is traditional for each clown to paint their own chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. These clown eggs are archived for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is extremely con considered extremely taboo to wear another clown's face. These must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them. Like the clown here in the sideshow tents and the ticket seller out front. Say, wait a minute, here's the egg for that balloon selling clown. Do you tell you there's another guy wearing the same makeup? According to this sign, that seems unlikely. I should go confront the guy about this. But dog weenies, nice. Hey, step back, please. No touching. Sorry. Leave the shelf. It's not his attitude, uniquely combining attentiveness and extreme boredom. You assume this clown's job is to keep an eye on the slideshow exhibits. Slideshow exhibits. Howdy, fellow. Welcome to the slideshow. Thanks. What's the scene here? Well, down to the left, we have a collection of sp uh, spooky warped mirrors. To the right, we have uh, exhibits of clown eggs and pickled punks. And further to the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore and I'll get here. I'll be here if you got any questions. Ask a question. What about these uh, people? You mean the freaks? Aren't they a scream? One of the giant eyeball head is my favorite. Nice, quiet fella. Uh huh. If you personally have, a, if you have questions about the other two, feel free to ask them personally. I wouldn't want to be telling tales out of school. Since the eye guy can't talk, you can ask me about him if you want. Wow! Hi, Solier. How's it going? Sorry. Thank you for that, Drake. Look, shower. Okay, look. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. Oh, fuck. How much of a fright, to be honest? You joined us, oh, about a year ago. Maybe a little bit less. Where do you come from? No idea. Where are they in it? You'd think a fellow looks like that, you've read about him all the papers, right? Well, yeah. He sure is mysterious. How'd he get like that? Couldn't tell ya. I bet you got a theory, at least. Ah, well, maybe we saw some no human fellow should ever see. Why is he locked to his chair? Ah, you know that, did you? Real shame it is. The fellow's a bit unpredictable. He has a violent spell once in a while. Gosh. Don't worry, you worry none. I keep an eye on him. Ha. <laughs> Oh, the mirror makes you look really stretch out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes as you move. It's a bit unsettling, and your muscles ache a little sympathetically. Your reflection of the mirror is short and squashed looking, folding up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. Lurk talk time? Okie doke. I love the, I love hit songs from the Might Be Giant's Hot Dog. <laughs> God, this mirror somehow shows you what you look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering lantern light, it's almost like he winks at you. Burr. You can't see me now. 
Alright, that's enough fucked up shit for today. Uh, earlier you told me there's another clown with the same face paint. That's right, the other balloon seller. Except I looked at the clown eggs display on the sideshow. There's only one egg with that pattern, and it's supposedly taboo for a clown to use another clown's makeup. Say, you're real sharp. Better watch out you don't cut yourself, ho ho ho. So what's the deal? You're right, there's just me. I walk around the midway and sell balloons at both ends. When people ask, I like to have a little fun with them. So they're not actually following me around. Ho ho, why would I need to do that? So you aren't dangerous or anything, right? Right. It's not a mirror, it's a window to my soul. Ha! It's the gumbo mirror! Anything else I can do for you? Nope. Alright, you know, let's actually do this. Muscular clown doesn't seem to want you to go in there, okay. This extremely muscular clown seems to be guarding the entrance to some sort of stage. Talk to him. Ticket, please. Ticket for what? Barnaby Bob Stunt Spectacular. What's that? The boss does a show, yes? Yeah. What kind of show? Knife tricks, mostly. Here's my ticket. Okay, go on in, show us the troll starts to. He enters the stage area. There's nobody here, I feel like I'm gonna get stabbed. I wonder what my soul would look like? I wonder what mine would look like, too. Take a seat, and a smattering of the other patrons appear and sit down as well. After a minute or two, there's a crash of cymbals, and a clown runs in from the backstage and curtain and jumps onto the stage. In contrast to the other clown's colorful clothing, his is relatively simple. Black wool trousers and a bright crimson shirt under a pale tan leather jacket with fringe on the sleeves, and a red heart painted on the shoulder. His face paint is plain white without any colored accents. Con Contrasting his curled black mustache and thin goatee, a snappy silk top hat, a snappy silk top hat with a rackish tilt tops off his outfit. He doffs his hat and bows with a deep theatrical flourish. The small audience audience claps politely. Clap. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome one and all to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow. I hope you've been enjoying the attractions and dis distractions of our little traveling carnival. And now it's time for our star performance, the main attraction. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for... A loud drum roll starts as he gestures to the curtain, and then with a simple scratch again. The clown puts his hat back on with a chuckle. Me, Barnaby Bob. I don't like this guy. He fucking... giving me odd vibes. Much obliged, much obliged. You're far too kind. Why, I haven't even shown you anything yet. With a laugh, he flips his large bowie knife into the air. He didn't even see where he pulled it from. The knife glitters as it spins. He catches it and flips it in the air again, this time catching and bouncing it on its point. On the tip of one finger, he holds that pose very still for a moment, then jerks his hand out of the way. The knife thunks into the wood of the stage floor, deep enough that he has to give it a jerk from side to side before he can yank the blade free. He winks broadly at the audience. Wouldn't be any fun if they weren't sharp, would it, ladies and gents? Clap. He pulls two more knives from oh hold on. Okay. He pulls two more knives from his jacket and begins a flashy and elaborate knife juggling act. Three spinning blades somehow turn into four, and then his hat is added into the mix, floating lightly through the cascade of knives without a single scratch. He finishes the routine by catching two of the knives in each hand and allowing his hat to fall nearly to the ground before catching it in the tip of his boot and kicking it back up into the air and onto the top of his head. Applaud. Ah, now there's some applause. I believe I've earned. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it took a lot of hats to get where I am today. He chuckles and adjusts his hat back onto his original rackish tilt. Now for the grand finale. For this, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. A few go hands go up. Go up. Barnaby Bob ignores and looks directly at you. But you, sir. Okay. Good. I like a brave one. Step right up onto the stage here. Your name, please. Final Fire. It's a real pleasure to finally meet you, Final Danger Fire. He, he, he knows my middle name. I didn't tell him. 
Step up onto the stage. A couple of clowns haul a wood large wooden panel about seven feet tall and four, feet, uh, four wide up onto the stage. They stand up vertically, or they stand up vertically behind you and stay there, holding it steady. It has two holes in it slightly above waist level, and a lot of knife marks. Your name is Danger? I thought it was Funky. You know, I th Final Funky Fire would be kind of awesome. But I believe, just for a random happenstance at the beginning of the game, I, I selected Danger, I think. Something like that. Press your back flat up against the wood, please, and put your hands through the holes. You do so. The holes are just a fraction too high, so it's not very comfortable. And one of the clowns pulls your arms back tighter and ties them together th uh, with rough hemp, so it becomes much more uncomfortable for a variety of reasons. Don't worry, this is just to make sure you don't make any sudden and unexpected movements. We wouldn't want that, would we? Uh, fret not, son. Fret not, son, everything is under control. He steps up close to you and adjusts your collar, brushes the dust off your shoulders. My control. You know, final. We get a sharp customer fr uh, here from time to time, but my, my, you're the sharpest I've ever seen yet. However, I bet a shiny silver dollar I've got something up my sleeve that's even sharper. His pupils narrow to vertical slits as he grins, uh, grins at you, revealing rows of pointed uh, yellow shark teeth. As he turns away, you can see that the heart of the sh the heart on the shoulder of his leather jacket is drawn with an arrow through it, and the word mom. It doesn't look painted on. Free your hands. Factorio? I, what about Factorio? This is the type of thing that would get you killed in like almost any D and D campaign. Yep. Huh. Final fuck you fire. You struck a little, but your arms are too tightly bound. The rough hemp rope digs into your wrists. Barnaby Bob strolls to the other end of the stage and turns to face you. Now, now, don't you worry. This will all be over soon. Just don't move. He has a knife in his hand again and gives a few twirls and flips. The light reflected from the blade glitters in his eyes. Then, without warning, he hurls at you. Thunk. The knife hits the wood before you can even blink. The hair's breath from your left ear. I'm gonna stare him down. Barnaby Bob grims at you as the crowd applause. Another knife appears in one hand and an apple in the other. He to tosses the apple to one of the stage hands, who carefully balances it on top of your head. Time for the old William Tell routine. A bit of a cliche, perhaps, but there's a reason it's a classic, eh, ladies and gentlemen? Take a deep breath. The crowd watches with rapt attention as he flourishes a knife, spinning it and flipping it behind his back. Then, faster you can register, thwack. Cold apple juice dribbles into your hair and, and down the back of your neck. Two for two. What do you say, final? Shall we go for more and more? I'm gonna stare him down again. Barnaby Bob pulls out another knife and gives a quick dropping across the pale leather sleeve of his jacket. Then whips a colorful spotted handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolds himself. This time his smile is much colder. I advise you to watch closely, Final Fire since you're the only one of us who can. Watch closely. The crowd laughs, but you really don't, but you really didn't, uh, but you don't really hear it. The knife spins in his hand, this time, either because of the adrenaline or because he's actually moving slower. You see the motion of his arm as he throws it. He twists his wrist in an odd way that you don't think he did before. The knife is flying at, uh, the knife is flying at you. The knife is flying directly at your right eye. I'm not gonna move. The knife incredibly swerves at the last possible moment. Thunk. You can feel the wood shake from the force as it stabs into the board. The metal is cold against your right cheek. The audience erupts into cheers as Barnaby Bob removes his blindfold and pumps a fist triumphantly. One of the stagehand clowns unties your wrists and helps you, uh, get your arms out of the holes. Bob takes your hand and races into the air victoriously. Well now, ain't he a good sport, folks? And as brave a target as I've ever had. Take a bow, Final Fire. Take a bow. 
And as a token of appreciation, oh, sorry, you bow to the cheering crowd, carefully keeping your eyes on Barnaby Bob. He bows as well, removing his hat with an elaborate flourish. And he takes a slip of paper out of it. And as a token of appreciation, I'd like to give you our star volunteer a gift, a year's supply of dynamite. Use it in good health. As he hands you the coupon, the clown leans in uh, close to your ear and whispers, this was only this was the only warning you'll get, boy. Barnaby Bob waves and blows kisses to the crowd as you climb down from the stage. And then he disappears through the backstage curtain. The audience uh, gradually disappears. Like even useful, I guess. If I if I ever get stuck with an enemy, I can just lob a ton of dynamite at him. This tra little trailer is probably Barnaby Bob's office. The wagon is old but well maintained. A brass plaque on the door reads Barnaby Bob, confirming your suspicions. Uh, what should I do? Should I knock on the door politely or kick in the door? Fuck it, I'll kick in the door. I right, nope. I'll knock on the door. Come on in, ba uh, Barnaby Bob calls. Enter. Were you asking us? Yeah, I was initially asking you, but now I decided otherwise. You open the door and walk into Barnaby Bob's office. He looks up from his desk, surprised to see you. You... Here, I thought I made myself perfectly clear the last time we met, and yet you knock politely and walk straight into the, to the lion's mouth. You are ext either extremely brave or extraordinarily foolish, bo boy. Both, I might hazard to guess. I've got some questions that need answered. And you think I'm going to answer them? If I didn't find you amusing, I'd have va vanished you off the face of this earth for what, for what little you know already. I appreciate that, but I can't just let, leave the situation unresolved. Curiosity to the cat is going to seem like a Sunday picnic compared to what I'll do to you if you anchor me, boy. Go ahead and ask your questions, but bear in mind, I already gave you a fair warning. Who are you? The, cl the clown saw smiles sar sarcastically at you. Why, I'm Barnaby Bob. At your service, sir. You know what I mean. And if my estimation of your intelligence was not entirely off the mark, you already know the damn answer. You are wasting my time and yours, and you have precious little. What are you doing here? Straight to the heart of the matter. Well, now I had you pegged as a clever one, so why don't you tell me? You're here because of the cows. Perhaps you got a brain rattling around in that skull of yours after all, boy. That's correct. The cows came home, as you say, and we followed them. Why? Why? Don't disappoint me now that you've impressed me, kid. Think about it. Your age-old enemy that you've been fighting since time came... Or since time out of mind ups and leaves. No farewell, no postcard. Wouldn't you want to know what the hell was going on? You don't know? Dear oh dear. I've gone and said something I probably shouldn't have. Buddy, you are treading on some dangerously thin ice right now. I hope you are thanking your lucky stars that I consider you essentially insignificant. You can hear those... I can hear those gears ticking in on that three, three pound dog's dinner you call a brain, son. Now's my turn to ask a question. How are you going to convince me that I shouldn't make you disappear like a fart in a tornado? <laughs> well, make a good final fire. Make it good because you get one chance at this. You need me. Do I now? What, and what, pray tell, do I need you for? My freak show is plenty full. There aren't enough of you to, uh, enough of you to be an army. You're, you're just a scouting party. You're reconnaissance. You're here to gather information. Yes, and? You can't do that efficiently. Not the way you guys look. You stand out too much. You need a human scout. 
Don't you play games with me, Sonny Jim? You were talking to Barnaby Bob, Duke of Hell. And I can make your worst personal nightmares look like a choir of softly singing angels. Ah, uh, never mind, I'll just be leaving then. Yes, you will, and you will not be returning. If I see your face again, boy, I will nail it to my wall and put you to work as the newest member of my freak show. He calls for the guard clown and has him escort, has, has, has him escort you back to Midway. You end up face down in the dirt next to stage entrance. Damn it. Okay. Hi, sir. Did you find my lucky bottle cap? Is this the one? That's it. Thank you, sir. Oh, I love how a portrait changes to a happy face. Wait, I thought Gumbo was the Duke of Hell. <laughs> You're right. Hello again, sir. Say it's a real nice balloon. You want to trade? I'll give you my lucky uh, bottle cap for it. Okay. Thanks again, sir. The kid runs off with his new balloon. I feel like I fucked up something. How much does it cost? You know, I think I saw a slide whistle. In the lost and found box over at the sausage stand. What? Really? Oh gosh. Wait, ju wait here just a minute. The clown runs over to the sausage stand and you quickly duck around the corner and open the front of the metal box. What you see inside is not what you expected. You see a fat, paper white spider the size of a cantaloupe. It's lying on its back, feebly struggling against the straps that bind its legs to the floor of the box. Slowly you pull the lever, a rod moves inside the box, pressing down on the spider's abdomen. The spider emits a thin, squealing sound and squirts something that looks like pure sponge sugar out of its anus and up into the funnel on top of the box. Oh, what the fuck? I'm now clean. Nice. You quickly shut the box and dart back to the front of the counter just before the clown returns. He gives you he gives you a momentary suspicious look, but it's quickly distracted by the joy of getting his slide whistle back. Fooey! You were right. Thank you so much. The clown carefully puts the slide wh slide whistle back in his shirt pocket, ducks under the counter, and comes back up with a paper cone, which he holds in the mouth of the metal box. He puts pulls down a lever, and the box emits a thin squealing sound as something resembling glittering white sponge sugar clicks around the paper cone in a fluffy cloud. I heard it grows slower than a snail. Am I, did I do something wrong with this? than here, El Bozo. <laughs> Clown War Pollen. Okay. Alright, I got a f uh, what was it? It was... Perhaps there's multiple side quests in the game. I've completed the, um, uh, what's it called? El Vibrado and the Necromancer one. What a cow. What a mess. Did cows go, did this to a guy? I reckon so, uh, judging from these tracks, but, um, what's wrong? So well, these tracks ain't quite right. What do you mean? They aren't spaced out right, and they're uneven. So what does that mean? I said, yeah, the cow that made these tra tracks was drunk, or was the cow that made them? something here oh 
What? Uh, Sai, why don't you go, like... Go blonde with a purple streak. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Every time I hear because it takes so much effort to keep looking not shit. <laughs> Investigate backwards. So like this. Am I supposed to look at these backwards? You like the game if you like the game the DC is more of the same nothing super special. I don't think I'm. I don't know if I'm gonna be getting the DLC. Maybe. General help! I'm supposed to follow the tracks backwards. Okay. All right, so over here. There's no option for doing that. Oh, it's uh, maybe this way? Oh, or do you mean like in the on the map? Investigate the tent? More thorough inspection reveals dusty boot prints on the tarot cannabis. Cows don't typically wear boots. Okay. The LC has a side quest that can be played at more or less any time, but its difficulty is locked when you first enter it. So if you start and then go back later, it'll be kind of sort of easy. We'll see the puzzles go through, which kind of... Okay, I see. Now investigate the tracks? Okay. What do you mean? You can investigate what's left of a corpse and or the run tent. When you investigate the tracks going the opposite way, options and look. Lead you to the clown camp site. Did I already have the clown camp site? I want to say I've been to a clown camp site before, but I don't know. turns, the A and Dairy is crossed out, and I, uh, DLC is a humor style though. So like I said, if you like the game, go for the DLC, it's more game to play. Okie doke. I'll, I'll definitely consider it though. I, I, I love, I, I've been having a blast with this game. I'm just trying to figure out how to do this quest, because I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Flip the diary. It's uh, Most of it's uneventful. Describing the life of a woman who likes books and isn't much interested in much else. This is the passage about a soldier from the nearby four wall. Okay, I read this one. Demons. The 
contains enough diamond for a whole year. Just one stick a week. <laughs> oh well. Did you ever grow cow's bane? I have not, no. There's probably a, quite a bit I haven't done yet. There's no book grave here and it doesn't have a skeleton inside. I wonder what they're asking for rent. Skull chips, burial whiskey, and an old engagement. What the hell do I do? Oh, wandered Sally. Can't fail the flavor sideline of the clowns, but you should be able to do the related thing. I think I think I did fail it, but I'm trying to figure out how to do the cow thing. My brain is melting. I don't know why, so I'll look until it stops. Okay, take care, man. It's nothing serious, I'm just preventing myself some, from saying some really dumb shit. Okay. You only can really get one shot of part of your conversation. Ah, uh, fuck. Alright. Battlefield's compass that dude must have always been left because this thing always points every which way but north. Generally northwest ish. West ish. Oh, well, they all have a better transponder thing. He bleeps and you follow the beeps. Oh, it's a. It crates. Just say crap. What if I use the compass now? Due north. <laughs> compass needle is pointing straight north. And if you pace back and forth a little, you can see it actually see it move. It's very close. There's nothing north of the ranch but woods. Do you want to follow the compass? Yes. Curly's cairn. Ooh, aspens. This looks very heavy. Look under it. You left at the corner of the entire cairn. There's some kind of machine buried underneath it. Got an item, Curly's auto gyroethodiolite. Graving on the machine says it was manufactured in January of 1995. Must be a typo. <laughs> An engravo. You get the sense you won't eat Curly's compass anymore, so you bird under the cairn. It's very peaceful. Machine looks complicated. Its main feature is a column of four little lights. Right now, all the lights are dark. There's a label on the back that says maximum effective depth f uh, 4 point K or 4.0K. Meters. Maybe it's supposed to be used at a mine or a cave? Also, what's the meter? Oh, 
Alright, let's go to a mine with this, I guess. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna say, oh fuck, so I'm not gonna read this. complicated. I mean, its main feature is the column of four little lights. Right now, all the lights are dark. There's a label on the back that says... Okay. What the hell am I supposed to do this Curly's thing? Alright, no, I'm gonna search this. Redwood. Oh, I did. I, I think I did the clown campsite. It's just not an actual location. I'm looking for Danny's Tannery. Southwest of Stern's Ranch. Thank you for the hydrate. I create supplies on a nearby army fort. Okay. I really hope I didn't fuck this up. But I did the. I think I did the clown campsite. Passing a vine at a campsite, an old crate catches your eye. Alright, open up. Locked, depressed rancher, candy link, rope, branding. Knapsack? There is nothing in the knapsack. That's the problem. Is there something that was supposed to be there? Don't tell me I fucked myself out of this quest line.
Sorry, I, 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 the key, the, the music keeps disappearing because I'm, I have to all tab out. Oh, I can't actually complete this. I think because uh, it's it says if you beat them, the cut the uh, if you fail to defeat them, the clowns will disappear and this location will no longer be available. Have I? I don't tell me I was there before. So I can't. I can't actually complete this then. Let's see if I can go to the the. I clicked on the wrong one. Ah, uh, whatever. Talk to it. I'm not. I'm not dealing with this right now. Try using binoculars. That's the problem. I. Ah, uh, not now. Thanks. Use binoculars, nope. Is there a port cowardice? Use binoculars, nope. Can I use, go at sterns and wander? Peanut butter. Oh yeah. The only other way is teaming up with Barnaby Bob. What's the game? Give it a shot. back and check to see if I got if I got ki my ass kicked by clowns you best thing you did oh, fuck my ass First player I teamed up with Bob, I played recently and killed the clowns and stick a... How do you kill the clowns though? That's... Oh, I guess you can't kill them here. New character, try a new class. Yeah, I... I don't want to have to go through all of that again. I'll, I'll do another playthrough in my own time, but I feel... Oh, fuck. Is there a way to revert my save?
I'm sorry, man. No worries. No worries. Give me a second. Let me search up. Go to destroy camps and move twice towards the trampled camp and move to the footsteps. Just really want to have control over your saves, you can manually copy your saves file. Oh, mother! Uh, Alright, you know what? Let's. I just read something. Let's see if I can try something. Here, go here, go here. Go here, talk. I wish I really wish I could go back and look and see like Simple time when two bros would sit in a hot tub fight every bird, no one goes. Okay. Oh, I, I think I screwed the pooch on this one. Sorry, guys. I'm wandering around the campsite with that. Maybe if he hits you from behind, charge at the. Oh, thanks for the 100 bits, Fix. You're gonna ex experience everything in a single save, anyways. No, I know, but I, I wanted to, like, because I actually had, like, I, well, that's one of the things I wanted to do today, was actually do this quest. But emotional support money, you don't have to do that, but I appreciate it.
Is there anything else you wanted to do? Uh, I did get an item. What was the item called? Uh, fuck, where'd it go? Auto, auto gyrothea, uh, I, gyrothea dolite. Let me, let me check. Have a Lights up as you descend Madness Maw. Okay. We we can, we'll, we'll we'll succeed in the quest before we before we shove off. Uh, what was it? It's Shroom Cave, Madness Maw. Interact with everything that has to do with Curly. This is a puzzle quest. Okie doke. West of Loathing is now owned? Nice. I'm glad you... Uh, glad people are actually enjoying that. Alright. Call before the lights. Two of the lights are lit up now. You're getting warmer. All four lights are lit, and the little wobbly antenna thing on top are vibrating and pointing at a spot on the wall of the mine. The rock there does look a little weak. Dig out the wall. This machine looks complicated. It's mean, uh, sorry. You break the spot indicated and pick away at it. You break through the to a hidden chamber, but unfortunately you bury the auto uh, gyrothea delight under some rubble in the process. Uh, an original way in and out of here club some time ago. Pretty nice nightstand for being in a cave at all. Let's see what's in it. Left half of Curly's map. Nice. Maybe this is where Curly slept. Some of the time. Maybe. This is stuff. Pie safe. Got some butter pie. Nice. The coals are completely cold. You should call them colds instead. Oh, fuck. I have not played Kingdom of Loathing. I should. I've heard it's good as well. Browser based turns per day RPG. Interesting. Oh, fuck, I just dropped my mouse. And the battery didn't go flying this time. Nice. Alright, so I got the left half of the map. half a treasure map. It's the half with the X on it, so it tells you where the treasure is, but it's missing the half at the beginning of the dotted line, so you don't know where to start. But he's full of half a velocipede, which is, say, not useful at all. You'll probably fall on your face and embarrass yourself if you try to use it. Turn it over. But without music or animation. Oh, not as fun, but I'm sure it'll be funny. On the back of the map, the following is written. Dear Treasure Seeker, the other half of this map is in the possession of my confidant, ha Halloway. Halloway. Was there a Halloway something or the other? There might be a handful of simply animated GIFs, but that's apparently it. Okay, okay. There you go. 
Uh, your elevator battle transported leads you towards a darkened grove of trees. These trees fix into to investigate and you discover that the reason the grove is so dark is because one of those elevator brought a monolith inside it. And the monolith is dark because it's not turned on. That makes sense, right? You insert the battery into the monolith and it springs to life. Everything goes blue for a second. Uh, you know a fellow named Curly? I found part of a map. He regards you coolly. Can't say that I remember what you're talking about. Sounds like he doesn't exactly trust you. Oh, what are you selling? Now you need to rob Halloween shit isn't breadwood. Okay. So, so, sounds like a pretty reasonable course of action. Just rob the poor bastard. Oh, it's Halloween's pen? Silver Jumble Neck Mine One Year Anniversary described on. Okay, fine. Alright, what if I put that on? Come to the banks of a large river, swollen with recent rainstorms and recent uh, seasonal snowmelt from the northern mountains. You may attempt to ford them. Carefully navigate your horse across the treacherous waters and manage to make it on the other side without running aground on a coral reef. Nice. Hey, Challoway, I found a silver pin. Uh, that I think belongs to you. Oh, dang it, I was hoping not to see that again. I locked it up with the keys inside on purpose. Too many bad memories. I appreciate the intention, that's real kind of you, but go ahead and keep it. Is something to do with you and why you live all the way here with the squirrels? I just don't feel comfortable in regular society no more. Oh, I won't pray further. You know a fellow named Curly? I found part of an app. Well, since he came all this way to return my pin, I guess he the trust where this sort Curly was looking for. Here, this is the other half of that map. Hell yeah. The two halves of the map fit together like two halves of a glove. This is just a map leading from Curly's Ranch in the southeast to Halloway's store in the northwest. This better not be some the real friendship was the real treasure was friendship crap. Oh. This X isn't real. It's an abject representation of your knowledge that something is buried here. Dig up that abstraction. I got Curly Strongbox. This is it. This is, uh, this is the treasure you've been searching for since you left Warring Springs. Though this is a lockbox, it's not a locked lockbox. Open it, open it. You take a deep breath, make a drumble noise with your tongue, and open the lockbox. Contains a framed note. Oh. Just kidding, there's a whole pile of meat in there. 11,000 meat, wow. Give me the bus check. Legend of Curly's Meat. <laughs> oh. Note from Curly. Framed note from Curly Butterfield. 
It reads, Dear Treasure Hunter, you have proven that you are as clever as an owl, as strong as a bear, and as compassionate as a bobcat. My soul can rest easily knowing that my treasure are in good hands. Spend it wisely. Or waste it. I don't care. I'm dead. XOXO Curly Butterfield. Awesome. This quest makes you rich. I'm rich, bitch. I only had 42 meat to begin with. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's what we're going to call it quits here, and I think that's, I don't think I'm going to be streaming West of Loathing anymore, but I've, I had a real good time with this game. Like, this, I'm, I'm, I think it was General who suggested it on my Discord. Oh, do the ending cutscene? Oh, okay, yeah, let's, let's do the ending cutscene. Angry looking skeleton. Oh, you know, let's let's fuck up one more skeleton. All right, you know, let's let's fuck up the final thing with with our favorite spell, the lava fava. Cause you know, I had f I actually had fun being a bean slinger. Like this made this game made magic really fun to me. Now playing the final cutscene. Looks like somebody on that train got a job as a projectionist. Would you like to watch this movie? It's free because movies have only recently been invented, and nobody has figured out that they can charge for them yet. Doing this will not change anything about the world or your character. When the cutscene is over, you'll still be right here, and you can keep playing if you want. Binge. Some folks say endings don't matter. But other folks, they like to know how things turn out. The consequences of their actions, like... With the trains running again, Frisco thrived. People came from all over to seek their fortunes, but thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire, because some cow attacked their wagon. Am I just looking over the town? Do you usually not enjoy magic? I'm. D some games don't do magic that well, in my opinion, especially with like a fixed, uh, like, mana bar. Like this one had action points that kind of made made things a little bit more bearable. I believe DLC won't unlock until after the DLC, but I'm. With the railroad completed and Norton ousted, Smee found himself out of a job but in of an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed to he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. In 1944, Frisco was named most reasonable city by two, by the Tuesday Evening Post. Good on me. Final balloons after stream or what? Like as in co-op? Witchcraft is the devil, and you're going to hell. Yeah. The idea of city life didn't appeal to Susie much. After you and she parted waves, she moved down the peninsula at ways and settled a cow's bane farm. Still fighting the good fight, in her way. I just got one that says, I love the way you shoot. Hold on, what does that say? Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad she managed to live a happy life. Yeah, Okie doke. After she, uh, after she finished getting the bakery boys up and running, Louise moved to Frisco and opened her own shop, specializing in artisanal breads and pies. Look at all that bread. She's making bread. Thanks to thanks to your assistance, Hopart Bupper and the photography bug, or photography bug, or should we say the photography owl? Anyway, he opened up an art gallery so the citizens of Frisco would never again have to suffer from the inability to see pictures of owl skeletons whenever they wanted. Ha! <laughs> I 
Kurtz left the fort and shut up, set up shop in Frisco. His cult um, fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. The growth was entirely due to word of mouth, because the first rule of Kurtz fit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurtz fit. I'm upset they didn't play the music, but I understand. <laughs> no Kurtz pain, no Kurtz gain. <laughs> oh my goodness. The cultists you rescued eventually joined a different cult. But the new one is quite a bit safer than the old one, since it's mostly about annoying people on the streets instead of unearthing ancient, ancient evil destructors. <laughs> No country disco, yeah. With your help, the professor gained enough knowledge about El Vibrato technology to start building his own. He opened a very successful consumer technology store in Frisco, and for decades people spent all their time staring at little computers in their hands instead of talking to one another. Motherfucker. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> El Vibrato is the one que one quest line as soon as I discovered that I wanted to complete. I can't believe I basically just created Apple. Oh my goodness. Uh, I hate this so much. Uh, I love it though. The musicians you sent to Dirtwater formed a band called the Pony Express. The music was a little uh, too esoteric for most people's tastes, but their fans claimed they were just ahead of their time. Nice! Buffalo 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 Build retired from the killing trade and made a killing opening up a restaurant in Frisco. Buffalo, 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 Wild, Wild, Wild Wings. <laughs> you solved all of Breadwood's problems. With the increase in morale and civic resources, they were able to clear the weeds from the road and fix the well and the broken hitching post. There was even enough left over to give uh, the, mo the mayor's office a new coat of paint, uh, refresh the facade on the buttery biscuit, and add a second story to the bunkhouse. They even managed to get that horse into rehab. <laughs> I believe the name changes based on which members are in it too. <laughs> I'm glad the horse got into rehab. I'm I'm so glad that the the the, the horse got rehab. We found the currents for country disco music. Nice. Olive Garden and Cactus Bill lived happily ever after. A wandering band of goblins found that Elver brought a weather machine you'd unearth, and formed a cult around it. Due to the increase in rainfall, both Olive's garden and her marriage were extremely prolific. Oh, they have little cactus kids. That's adorable. I... You know what? This is the best ending. Because Cactus Bill and Olive Garden are... are th this makes me happy. <laughs> hey, horse buggers. Makes me question Bill's biology. Like, where's his pee pee? Jokes on you. They're all his needles. I'm not gonna. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, turnip. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Thank you so much for the subscription. We were just finishing West of Loathing. I'm just looking at the uh, ending, ending credits. But thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate that. How's it going? Turnip. J
feel like one of my fingers are swollen. Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incidents, accidents, scandal, or allegation for many years. Blood and breakfast. Was that something I had to do? You won four of the reenactment scenarios at Fort Memoriam. They still talk about you. Remember when that final fella came through here? Yeah, he was really, really good at this game. Do we have any more root beer? Hell yeah! <laughs> it was part of retrieving Redwood's mail. Oh, okay. But anyways, turn up. What, what have you been up to? With your help, Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum became the talk of the town. Well, first they had to build a town nearby. But once they did, whoo wee! <laughs> that one guy is super excited for jelly beans. Dirtwater became, relatively speaking, a thriving metropolis. Thanks to your efforts as a commerce ambassador and all-around helpful stranger, the once sleepy town became a shining oasis in a barren land. Every man, woman, and child in the town knew your name. They even put up a little plaque with your name on it in your old room at the Jewel. I love those two. Beans. Just been getting settled with the new roomies. Nice. Is Spug there too? Well, I'm glad everybody's having a jolly old time drinking. As for you, after your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs of your exploits and started an antique cat rat collection. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to help people. Over the course of your adventure, you helped 72 people. You weren't whistling Dixie when you declared your intentions. If you had been Catholic, they definitely would have sainted you if you had asked. But well, you wouldn't have asked because you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to be any trouble. Wow. Oh, they 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 keep all your hats. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Well, I'm, I'm glad you have roommates now. Hopefully, rent's a lot easier. Skip made her a desk by his setup. Nice. Gotta, gotta see pictures of that soon. I say this entirely jokingly, but I gotta... Actually, no, I can't say that. I love how the spittoon hat is last. I don't think there's a way to get every single hat there, and I believe, I believe it's only every hat you currently have. Yeah. Thank you for the hydrate. Alright. Did you discard any hats? Several, yeah. In 1906, all the remaining cows in the west were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell. They thundered east, forming a gigantic single-minded herd. Led by the infernal sadist Jerk Duke Bovicus, the cow army thundered east toward dirt water. Uh oh. Something I didn't fucking do. Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clowns swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd just before it reached dirt water. Unfortunately, all of the townsfolk of dirt water had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was, it was a grisly sight. Thanks to your cleverness, the world is not destroyed 420 years later. On the contrary, it remains undestroyed for millennia. Future generations don't know why they should thank you, but they definitely should. Oh yeah, Ricardo. Yeah, their desk desks are next to each other, it's cute. <laughs> 420, it's turn up years! It's, it's like you came at the perfect moment. 
It wasn't Ricardo. What? This is Ricardo. This is the Ricardo keeping container. Roberto. That's right, Roberto. Thank you for playing. This was a really good game. I had a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Superhuman QA. Uh, if if there was ever another of loathing game after a West of Loathing, I would love to play it. I, I know there's Kingdom of Loathing, but from from what somebody said earlier, I don't know if I'll be playing that. But thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. The end. If you enjoyed West of Loathing, you might enjoy a free browser-based game, The Kingdom of Loathing. Okay. That was awesome. Sorry I showed up at the very end. No worries, Turnip, no worries. It's all good. I'm, I'm just I'm just glad, like... I'm, I'm happy regardless, you know? I'll have to watch a VOD? <laughs> well, I post all my VODs on my channel. <laughs> I don't know if, if Asymmetric is working on anything. Regardless, I think I think this was like an excellent game. Uh, but let me put on the music. Uh, the 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 music of uh, of Kurtz, and we'll go and fi find somebody to raid. Hell yeah. Hold on. All right, let's figure out somebody to raid. Uh, let's see. Cow is playing. Avery's playing. And Polaro's playing. Oh. Oh, I... Okay, never mind. Let's, let's read Avery Connors. But I, I, I hope everybody, uh... Actually, hold on. I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta say something quickly. Well, well. Uh... Thanks, thanks everybody for, like, st sticking... I'll, I'll actually, you know, I'll, I'll play it but lower, but just so I can... That should be... Actually, hold on. There we go. So, before we go, thanks to everybody for like, I, I I heavily enjoyed this game, like laughing and just playing the game and all enjoy. Extremely fun. I mm, rice roni, nice. I'm I will say one thing to you guys. Fucking got him. Are you gonna be streaming the DLC? Maybe if I got it. I don't know. There's a lot of DLCs I want to play. Raid message reminder, I haven't even started the raid. But Sphix, you let your guard down. <laughs> Kurt, okay, so the, the, the raid message will be Kurt's fit raid. Uh... This will be the raid message, and if you don't have that, feel free to use whatever you got. But I, I hope everybody has a good rest of their day or night, depending where you where you're at. And uh, again, thanks thanks so much for recommending this. This 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 was this 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 was banger. Thank you so much. In my defense, Twitch is titting itself. 
I know, but yeah, Spix, I hope you're ready to hate me for what I've done to the entire chat. But you, you guys will see as soon as I'm done compiling. I hope you guys have a good night, though. And, uh, take care. <laughs>